participate and could I invite the Orana uh, Wildlife Trust to come forward, Lynn Anderson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to present, um, be heard in relation to our submission today. Much appreciated. Arana Wildlife Park is a Christchurch and Canterbury icon. Um, the reason we're here today is quite obviously you've read our submission. We are asking that as a major community asset that we get recognised in the long term plan for secured ongoing funding. Um, just to touch on what we're about, of course, recreation. We have been one of Canterbury's leading recreational facilities for over 40 years now. We're an important contributor to economic growth and also the recovery of the region. Um, after fundraising very hard, we um, brought the first gorillas to New Zealand in 2015, a critically endangered and iconic species that we're privileged to hold. And during that year alone, 200,000 people came through our doors and over 55% of those were from Christchurch and Canterbury. But of course we're also um, encouraging people to come to our wonderful region and um, enjoy what we have to offer. Okay, sorry, just a wee technical glitch here. Education, we have a contract with the Ministry of Education through the Learning Experiences Outside the Classroom um, project and have done since the year 2000. Our current contract goes through until 2020. Um, we deliver formal education curriculum linked um, to over 7,000 7, Canterbury children a year and what sets us apart is that these are whole day experiences to take away enduring learning outcomes. We also have two partnerships with the Warehouse and the Department of Conservation who both fund transport and other ancillary costs to enable um, low decile schools to, to visit. So in the last year we've um, had a lot of low decile schools through our doors due to those partnerships. Um. And of course, conservation advocacy, we educate every visitor that comes through the door with take-home messages such as keep your dog on a lead to protect kiwi, such as buy sustainably when it comes to products with palm oil to save orangutans, and also of course, lightening your environmental footprint by recycling. We've just completed a major survey in April. 92% of our visitors plan to make a conscious effort to help the environment as a result of their visit and 95% understand that they impact species in their environment with their decisions. So um, we feel that that's, we really are getting through. Conservation of course, I know that when people think of Arana that they often think lions and tigers and gorillas and now orangutans, um, but it's lesser known. Um, often since the media doesn't cover it, the amount of amazing conservation work we do for New Zealand native species. In the last few years, 23 Arana bred kiwi have been released to the wild. Over 60 fio um, have also been bred and released to the wild and we were initially part of the North Island fio breed and release program. Last year the Department of Conservation invited us to start a South Island Breed for Release program. We bred the first 13 South Island FIO in captivity and all of those 13 have been successfully reared and reached to, uh, released to the west coast already. Um, it's not a matter of put two ducks together and breed them. Our highly specialist staff um, pull the eggs for artificial egg incubation. The ducklings are um, hatched, reared and also taught how to behave in the wild. So this is not just two ducks make a pile of them to put out in the wild. <laughs> okay, again Partiki, another nationally um, threatened species and that's another of our Arana team members out at a release. 
To date, we have bred over 80 Pateki, which have been um, released to the wild, various sites all over New Zealand. And um, just last year, um, Department of Conservation gave us a new founder pair from Great Barrier Island with new genetics. So such, such, such is our success in that area that we are engaging more. A real big excitement is, I'm sure you all know about the orange-fronted parakeet. That's our Canterbury um, parrot, and it's nationally critical. We were so privileged to be invited to join the program for the species um, in 2017, and you only get that if you are really performing, because these guys are so endangered. Two chicks, and that's a picture of one of the chicks that um, we've read so far, so um, we're really excited about that. It's not just conservation um, helping to restore species in other places at Arana through native planting over the years. We are a habitat in our own right. We um, have over 25 New Zealand native species living and breeding in the grounds of their own volition. Uh, the Canterbury spotted skink was rediscovered about 10 years ago. It was thought extinct since the, since the 1980s. Bellbird breed and um, live in the park all year round. Internationally, of course, we are recognised for our contribution to exotic species efforts and I'm not sure if many of you have heard in the media that um, recently we have signed a deal with the Australian Rhino Project and the aim of that is to, with two other major large zoos in Australia in partnership to create a really large population of southern white rhino in this part of the world. The poaching rate is exceeding the um, birth rate, and at this rate, if southern white poaching carries on, they will be extinct by 2024. And so we are banding together to um, help ensure that the southern doesn't go the way of the northern white rhino, which just happened a couple of months ago. We lost the very last one in the world. And you'd all know cheetah, giraffe, etc. Research. We also take part in a lot of research to support endangered animals. For instance, we do trial bait tracks for Kia to make sure that they don't bother them in the, in the wild. And a really thrilling thing is we are soon to receive one of the four critically endangered New Zealand um, frog species in our new captive breeding research facility, which is close to completion. All with funds raised from outside sources. Um, but there's challenges. In this modern world, um, we are at a situation where we set our budget annually on what we can afford rather than what we actually need. We need to increase our staff levels. Current workloads are actually unsustainable and in fact um, some of our team works so hard that um, you know burnout is a potential possibility. With a zoo, that we are operating, which is, is world class with the work that we do, we must recognise that we need really skilled professional staff. Being the most geographically isolated major zoo in the South Island of New Zealand, our current wage structures are as such that we train our own professionals from scratch. We find it very difficult to attract professionals from other zoos throughout Australasia, and as a result, after five years of intensive training, if you have a staff member head off to Australia, well, you start again. Gorillas and orangutans are two of the most critical, critically endangered species in the world. And, um, yeah, we need to um, continue our professionalism, and that means increased staff. And there's also increased compliance over the years, of course, um, there are the new zoo regulations have come out. We take our job very seriously. Operational costs increase all the time as well. Um, even the health and safety. A number of years ago, we would have one person alone operating tiger and lion reserves, highly dangerous animals. These are all a two-person operation now because we must operate at a highly professional level. Everyone deserves to come home safe from work every day. And as a result, this further stretches resources. So, essentially, we're employing, imploring the council to increase our operational funding to at least $500,000 per annum and include it in the long-term plan rather than us apply annually to the um, Strengthening Communities Fund, given 
around its huge importance as a key community asset. Um, I won't say it, but yes, other councils do significantly support their major zoo and we're very, very grateful for the support we've had through the Strengthening Communities Fund over the years, but we do ask the, to help see Orana in performing at this level into the future that the council gets behind our drive by recognising us. Thank you very much. Yes. Do you have just a quick word you'd like to say? I'd like to introduce David Barker, our chairman of the board, and Mike Wall, very long-term board member, along with David and um, Come on. Yes. And Lynn Anderson, who's our chief executive, who didn't introduce herself. Yeah, we, we have come to the end of the 10 minutes, so if you could just be really, really brief, I'm going to have to move on to the next submitter. I won't have any further we, we Our current expenditure is $3.3 .3 million. What's, that's what it costs us to run the park. Um, uh, we don't feel that we can recover any more from uh, attendees. Their charge, an adult charge, $34 to come to our park. Um, we are, in terms of being able to meet the demands of health and safety, MPI, all the other things that have been talked about, uh, we do need support from the council. Happy to answer questions. Uh, any questions? Well, there's no time for questions. I'm okay. really sorry, but um, it, it's yeah. I mean, we have a, a, a 10 minute slot on how you use it. It's, sorry. And um, we're all tied into the questions. But I, I will say that there is a funding review working group that's operating at the moment. And one of the things that we are considering is the establishment of line item for, um, line item is not the right word, but proper partnership agreements with those essential characteristic, characteristic building um, uh, features of our city. So um, your submission ties in very nicely with that work. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.